President Biden will again make clear, as he's done unequivocally since Hamas's slaughter of more than 1,400 people, including at least 30 Americans, that Israel has the right and indeed the duty to defend its people from Hamas and other terrorists. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, he's been traveling throughout the region, announcing President Biden's visit tomorrow in Israel and a show of support for the Jewish state during a time of war. He will also visit Jordan, perhaps others yet unannounced. Nikki Haley is a former U.S. ambassador at the U.N., now a candidate seeking the Republican nomination for president. And thank you for your time, Madam Ambassador, on this rather busy day. Good morning to you. Back in 2017, you were in the Gaza Strip. You uh, were inside the Hamas tunnels. What did you experience there, and what do people need to understand from your visit? Well, you know, I was on the um, border with Lebanon, and I saw the Hezbollah rockets facing Israel. I was in those Hamas tunnels, and I can tell you they're highly sophisticated. They are um, miles and miles long. This is where Hamas goes to hide. This is where they put their equipment. This is where they put their ammunition. And this could be where they put their hostages. But the one thing that we all know is these tunnels are all underneath schools and hospitals. And that's exactly what Hamas wants. They know that Israelis value life. And they know that the hardest way for them to get to what they're doing is to put it underneath schools and hospitals. And that's the biggest issue that we're going to see going forward is Hamas does not value life. They never have. And so they will use uh, women and children as human shields as we go into this conflict. They will try and show that Israelis killed you know, many people, and that's the way they'll try and get sympathy. But the reality is, if anyone dies in Gaza, it will be at the hands of Hamas. What do you make of President Biden's visit there tomorrow? What does that tell you or signal to those in the region? I think that it's good that President Biden is going to Israel, but he should not be going to tell them to show restraint. He should not be going to tell them to have a ceasefire. And he should be talking about how we need to come down harder on Iran. I mean, make no mistake, there would be no Hamas without Iran. There would be no Hezbollah without Iran. And so you can't not see the 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 role that Iran has played in all of this. And that's really should be a focal point for the United States and for the Biden administration right now. Uh, The other day you said half of the Palestinians don't want to be ruled by Hamas. I don't know if you were speaking about all Palestinians or thus those living in the Gaza Strip. Uh, Ron DeSantis, in a time of politics, jumped on that remark. He said this. She's trying to be politically correct. She's trying to please the media and people on the left. Uh, I don't care about that. I'm going to speak the truth and let the chips fall where they may. What do you make of that? Because he's saying we should not take any Gazan refugees into the U.S. I've always said we shouldn't take any Gazan refugees in the U.S. I said it when I was at the U.N. that we shouldn't take Syrian refugees at the U.S. I believe that those in the region should take them. I said that about Syria then. That's why Jordan and Turkey took the the bulk of the refugees there. And I think, honestly, the um, Hamas-sympathizing countries should take these Gazans now. We're talking about Qatar. We're talking about Iran. We're talking about Turkey. They should stay in the region. There is no reason for any refugees to come to America. And I, you know, my record's very clear on that. So you you agree with Ron DeSantis? I've always said that. I mean, that's the last thing we want. One, because we don't know who they are. But two, Bill, look at the fact that Egypt doesn't want them. Why doesn't Egypt want them? For the same reason that we should not want them. It's because you can't vet them. You don't know. But also, I found out refugees want to stay within their region. So let the Gazans stay within the region. Jordan is right there. Iran is there. You know, Qatar is there. And I said this at the UN. They would always say they wanted more money from the U.S. They would always say that the U.S. needed to protect the Palestinians. And my comment in multiple speeches was, why is it the role of the U.S. to do this? Where are all the Arab countries? If they care so much about the Palestinians, why aren't they taking them? If they care so much about the Palestinians, why aren't they funding their flight of humanitarian need? That is not the role of U.S. to do that. I've always said that, and I I continue to say that. I do want to put a fine point on this. He called you politically correct. What would you say to that? Comment on NBC. I don't. 
I'm not going to say anything to Ron DeSantis when we know we're running for president and he's trying to say whatever he can. I mean, I think anybody can look at me as governor. You can look at me at the U.N. You can look at me now. I'm blunt. I'm to the point. I say what needs to be said and I stand by it. Why do you make the comment about half of the Palestinians don't want to be ruled by Hamas? Um, and wh- well, why the, have we not within heard the conversation. more from, from that population about specifically that? I think from the, you know within the conversation, I was telling um, the other network that look what we saw was the Iranians um, in Iran. They don't want to be under the Iranian regime. We saw when I was at the UN, half of the Hamas did not. I mean, half of the Palestinians didn't want to be under Hamas. They don't want that rule over them. And so the focus is governing. It's not about refugee status or anything else. It's about the fact that you do have many members of the Palestinian and Gazan community that don't like Hamas, that don't want Hamas to be there. But that's the issue that's always been the case between the Palestinians and Hamas. Hamas has rule. Hamas is governing all of Gaza right now. And that's the reason that we're having this problem. And that's why that reason, that place is so dangerous. You mentioned Iran a moment ago. Iran is now an ally with Russia with regard to its war in Ukraine. Do you believe that Vladimir Putin gave tacit approval to Iran to go ahead and allow Hamas to, to make a move on the 50th anniversary of, uh, of Yom Kippur? I think that you have to look at the fact that Russia and China are solid partners and Iran is their junior partner. I mean, the fact that China is importing more oil from Iran than any other country and sending billions of dollars their way, the fact that Russia is getting their drones and missiles from Iran and sending them money that way, um, you have to see this partnership for what it is. And so I think you'll see today in the United Nations, if there's any sort of resolutions, they're going to continue to have the back of Iran. They'll veto anything that's going to hurt Iran. They won't ever call out Hamas as a terrorist organization. They're going to go and give Hamas cover because it's Iran that backs Hamas. And so I think that if you read the writing on the wall with what's happening at the United Nations or otherwise, that's the focus. And that's why the Biden administration is so wrong on this. They weakened sanctions on Iran, which all that did was allow money to flow to Hamas and Hezbollah. You know, whether it was the hostage money, now we've got American hostages. And don't think for a second they're not going to want to have billions of dollars for those hostages as well. And now you're going to have sanctions expire at the U.N. And I can tell you, I constantly was telling them the U.N. never... the. Iran never followed U.N. resolutions, ever. They were always in violation of every U.N. resolution. And that's why the U.S. needs to lead and point out all of these violations. And if the U.N. will not go and put these sanctions in place, it is up to the U.S. to go and put these really strong sanctions in place for Iran. We have to decimate their economy and make sure that they know. We've had a problem since the Obama administration. The Obama administration were Iranian sympathizers from the start. That's why they got into this Iran nuclear deal. Now we see in the Biden administration, it's Obama 2.0. They continue to be Iranian sympathizers. We can't do that. We have to see Iran for the dangerous um, country that they are. I have 30 seconds left during your time at the U.N. You experienced a lot of this uh, back and forth and anti-Israeli sentiment. Do you expect the U.N. to issue a statement of condemnation against Israel sometime soon? Absolutely. Within question, I'd give it until the end of the week. Uh, You know, if it's a good day at the U.N., it might be next week. But you will see them go and condemn and say that they're killing um, so many Palestinians. But no one will talk about all the death, the torture and the bloodshed that happened at the hands of Hamas. Nikki Haley, thank you for your time today. I'm out of time for now. But Madam Ambassador, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks so much.